Yeah, <laughs> tacos al pastor is going down in my house, but I have to show you guys how to make the marinade first. This marinade is delicious. It's definitely my take, and that's what I love about this recipe is that every family has their take on it, and I've even tweaked my mother's recipe. You know how I am, guys. I am a uh, fusion food. <laughs> But if you guys don't like pork, that's okay. You can make this with chicken. You can make it with fish. You can make it with shrimp. You name it, even tofu. You can make it with that as well, especially for those tacos and chicharron that I showed you guys how to do. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> so if you guys want to see how I make this marinade, uh, please keep watching. All the details are going to be in the description from recommended amounts of uh, marinade for particular proteins. Um, but I think, I think you guys are going to be happy. So if you guys are ready, let's... Let's get to it. <laughs> okay, friends, what I have soaking in this warm water, and I've had this soaking for about 10 minutes, okay? I have some guajillo chile. If you can, if you don't have guajillo, you can use a California chili or you can use a New Mexico, which is a little bit spicier. If you're not too sure about your spice level, the guajillo and the California are pretty much very, very similar. And then what I have here is I have uh, pasillas that have been soaked as well. And um, I have all your measurements and the amounts that I used in my description area with, um, along with the rest of the ingredients that we're gonna be uh, discussing right now. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and blend the chilies first. And I'm gonna blend them in my bullet because whenever I use chili peppers, especially the ones that I've already soaked, this purifies them and there is no straining. And you guys know how I feel about the straining. So let me go ahead and place them in here. Oopsie. That sounded like a creepy movie, didn't it? <laughs> the kid on the bike that's gonna get in trouble? Yes. Kids, don't ride your bikes unsupervised. So make sure you get all your little chilies that are in there. Mine are just seeds and a few little specks. This is my recipe and I've even tweaked my mother's recipe so you know we got a few little headaches going on from those arguments. But um, one of the great things about this recipe is that you can adjust it to your flavor profile. If you like more of a spicy, you can add more spice and make sure to look in the description area. I'm making this for my family that don't wanna make it too spicy. Um, but one of the things that you can add there is uh, chipotle. If you don't have a chipotle, that's fine. Um, but that definitely adds a really good spicy punch to it and a smoky uh, flavor. So what I'm trying to say is that this recipe is very versatile and you can adjust the seasonings to your liking because I know some of you guys are overseas and can't get a hold of some of our Mexican spices, but you can make do. So let me show you. Okay, so what I have here is I have some ground cumin. Some ginger powder. What do you guys think this is? That's ground clove. Okay, if you don't have ground clove, that's okay. You can use um, the regular sized cloves and put them in your blender. It's not a clove of garlic, it's a spice clove. It's a spice clove, yes. These are the cloves of garlic over here, friends, which you are gonna need. And you don't wanna use too many of those because it's gonna take, and it's gonna overpower, actually. It's gonna overpower your blend, so you wanna be subtle with your, um, with your garlic, and mine are humongous, so I'm using three. If you have the smaller ones, adjust to your liking. Um, I have a little bit of cinnamon here, and the cinnamon balance with that peppercorn is amazing. Um, if you don't have uh, the peppercorns, you can use some pepper, black pepper, and I have all those ingredients and amounts in the description area. We have some, you guys know what this is yet? Oregano. Mexican oregano, good job, Cloud. <laughs> <laughs> and one bay leaf. I'm telling you, be careful with your bay leaf or else you're gonna make it turn bitter. Okay, I'm gonna give you guys a starter amount of salt if you're not too sure what to go with, but then after you make it, you kinda of have to taste it and see if you want a little bit more salt or if it's too salty. That's when you have to balance it yourself, but again, that's too uh, salt to taste. <laughs> All right, and here is the star of the show. This is achote. They sell it in a little box in the Mexican aisle and um, it has a bit of a bitter taste if you were to eat it by itself and that's the reasoning uh, for us to blend this marinade with, I almost wanted to say drum roll but I don't know if anybody wants to give me a drum roll. Some apple cider vinegar, okay? 
It's gonna help the bitterness from your achote. And if you guys are curious a little bit more achote, I'll make sure to put something in the description that gives you guys an idea of what it is. In here, I have some orange juice and pineapple juice. Obviously, if you have fresh orange juice, great. If you have, um, which one is that one? Is that the bitter orange? Ooh, if you Ooh, have that bitter good oranges. bitter orange, um, a Valencia orange would work great with this. And, um, but I'm gonna be using a uh, refrigerated, what is it, the simple brand? Mm -hmm. <laughs> orange juice and um, the dull uh, pineapple juice in here. I just use one can, okay? So that's what we're gonna put in our blender and we're gonna start making this sauce, yeah? Go ahead and add your achote. 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 <laughs> you say achote? Well, let me show them the little box so you guys can have an idea of the one that I'm using. You got it there, Claude? Thank you. There it is. Achote rojo. If you can get a hold of your achote and you want to make this marinade and you have everything else, don't worry. It'll still come out delicious. Just add a little bit of red dye and tell them it's your uh, al pastor. That's a little secret from the restaurants. Authentic Mayan flavor. Ooh, yeah. Your apple cider. And here's the thing that if you're gonna make uh, your pork, because traditionally you use pork for this particular recipe, the apple cider, you guys know if you make American barbecue, you add apple cider to your marinade, it is divine. And this is amazing when you use apple cider vinegar. If you don't have it, use regular, but I definitely recommend you guys trying it at some point in your life with apple cider vinegar. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and add oregano, cumin, ginger, ground clove or your whole clove, whatever you're using, cinnamon, peppercorns, garlic, bay leaf, sal, salt. Now, <laughs> You guys know that I'm always pushing it to the limit. Either it's a small bowl or I am packing my blenders. I don't know, I need an industrial blender. Let's see where the max is. Right there. Keep going, we'll tell you. Stop. Shut it down, open up shop. <laughs> oh, oh. Finish it in the comments. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna blend this. Um, and then I'm gonna pour a little bit out so that I can get all the flavors going together. Un, dos, tres, cuatro. You guys ready to have some fun? So now what you can do with your marinade, you can divide it into little Ziploc bags. You can put them in your freezer and save them. Most things in the freezer, especially marinades, will last six months and over, okay? Um, that's one thing that you can do if you find that you need a little bit more marinade for the amount of meat that you're using because always it's difficult when I have small families wanting to make this and larger families this recipe is very versatile and I made it that way for you guys to make it easier so if you need a little bit more liquid for your marinade you can add an extra can of the pineapple juice which is about six ounces and you can add an extra cup of your orange juice and that's where you start balancing your flavors and if you need a little bit more make sure to add a little bit extra of your apple cider vinegar most of these recipes are um, eyeballed, like in restaurants and traditionally in Mexican uh, cuisine. So just eyeball it and taste. <laughs> but if you taste, you are definitely gonna have a little bit of bitterness, okay? Trust me, it's gonna be good once it's cooked. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour this over here and give it a quick blend to dilute it all. I want you to taste it because you need to know what the flavor that's gonna pull through so that way when you make it again, it has a familiar taste to you and you kinda know what you're looking for, okay? So you're gonna get a little bit of the bitterness and it's not completely bitter like how you would think. It's subtle but sweet and then you taste all the delicious spices and then you start blushing kinda like I am right now. <laughs> so Cloud, I want you to take a taste, girl. Ooh, this is not bitter at all. You don't think it's bitter? Maybe it's just me. I already taste the like the al pastor. Yeah, that's delicious. All right, friends, there you have it. Let me show you the consistency that I have going on. It's very, very runny. If you want more of a paste, obviously less liquid in here, but ooh, 
the apple cider in here, you can taste it, but it's subtle. It's not strong. It's definitely not going to hurt your throat. So again, this recipe is good for a variety of proteins, even your tofu. You can do it with your tofu. Um, keep an eye on the channel. Make sure you guys are subscribed because I'm going to be making a lot of dishes with this um, here for our fall winter season. And um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this recipe as much as my family does. And thank you guys so much for joining me today. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios.